Now that Stefan Tuit has officially retired, what's the play? The reported cap savings due to Tuit's retirement is around $9 million bucks, which gets us to $21 million approximately in cap space right now. When we're talking specifically defensive line in relation to this cap space, I think we're in a weird spot. I say that because I'm actually low-key confident in who we have still. And some of you guys in the comments from the Tuit retirement video agree with me. Raymond Harper says, It's a good thing we got Leal last year in the draft. Good luck, young man. Thanks. Sovereign 100 says, I know it might sound crazy, but I think Wormley and Loudermilk can rotate in this position and be successful. You got to think. Alu Alu's back. Wormley, he got seven sacks last year. He's an underrated player. We also have Loudermilk, who I think still has a decent amount of upside. And then we drafted Liao in the third round. He was supposed to be a first round pick coming into the college football season, but things happen. He fell. Actually, I mean, he's borderline supposed to be a top 10 to 15 pick. So, Excuse me for kind of thinking that potentially a rotation of these guys, and if you want to include Montrevious Adams, could work out. Or it could be one or two of these guys just emerge, grab the bull by the horns, and become a stud. I don't really think that's out of the realm of possibility. But at the same time, we do have cap space, and it definitely wouldn't hurt us to go out and grab a veteran defensive lineman, or even splurge and grab a dude in their prime to shore up the unit, just because... Even though I'm talking highly about the guys the Steelers have on the roster, there is still some uncertainty there. So going out and shoring up the unit wouldn't be a bad thing. So if we're going to consider making a move, why not go over the options that are available? You kind of got this broken up into tiers. You got the veterans who should be on more affordable contracts, and you got guys in their prime, but there are some question marks about them. And then there's a dude kind of completely in his own tier. So we'll start with the veterans. We got Indomitian Sue. Played really good for the Bucks these last three seasons. Might be pricey just based off the name. His last three contracts, or his last three cap hits, rather, were $9 million, $8 million, and $10 million. So, I don't know, you add those numbers up, $27 million over three years. That's $9 million a year. I don't know if he's looking for something in the five to six range just based off his age being 35, but he's still productive. And Moats actually had some interesting things to say about the Steelers possibly signing him and why it would make sense. I said, if we were going Sue, I would only do that if I knew for certain I'm not getting to it back because I'm bumping him out and he's going to play that same type of role. So, yeah, I mean, to me, I think that Sue probably would be the one of the better fits in it if we were going that route. Brandon Williams from the Ravens, he's still pretty good. Might be a cheaper option than Sue. Linval Joseph, Star Low to Laley, who actually I think would be a perfect fit even outside of Tuit retiring. Just signing him and splitting some snaps with Tyson Alualu because that's kind of the role he started to carve out with the Bills and he was successful. So just bring him in, 30-40% of the snaps, and rotate him with Alualu. I think that could be a smart move. And then lastly for the veterans tier, Sheldon Richardson. I think you could get him on the cheap. He signed a deal last year with the Vikings for $3.6 million. Former Offensive Rookie of the Year. I know that's a while ago, but also a former Pro Bowler. But I think the difference is between him and Starr, you could probably move him around the line a little bit more. The guy's in their prime, but some question marks. Eddie Goldman, 28 years old, big-time run stopper. I think would fit perfect with the Steelers' defense. You could put him in at nose tackle and probably at times move him out to where it was playing if you want to bring in Alualu. Versatile, so like I think it could be a perfect match. The only question mark is... Where's he at in his career trajectory? Because last year was probably his worst year in his career. Definitely a down year. But then in 2020, we didn't get to see him at all because he sat out for a COVID season. So his last two years haven't been his most productive. So you're just kind of hoping for a bounce back. How much is he going to cost? That's the other question. If it's between 5 to $7 million, I think it's a no-brainer. So that's a dude to watch out for for the prime tier. Also, we have Larry Ogunjobi, a guy that we're familiar with. Played for the Browns, played for the Bengals, and is a pretty damn good player. Now, the question with him is just injuries. Is he healthy? He was going to sign with the Bears this offseason for a pretty decent deal. Three years, $40 million, but he failed the physical. So you just kind of got to wait and see where he's at with his health. Can he pass a physical? And if those two things are true, and that is the case, the next question is, what do you do about his contract? Because I'm doubting... What he signed for with the Bears is still available, that three years, $40 million, just because, one, time has gone on. Teams have started to use up their cap space, signing a bunch of free agents. And also, there's a little bit more of an injury risk here. So if he can maybe get to that 
five, seven, eight million dollar range that could be beneficial for the Steelers if they are looking at Larry as a viable option. The last tier, Javon Hargrave, dude that is coming off a Pro Bowl season in his prime and is familiar with the Steelers system. Do we bring him back? There's a couple questions with this one. First is, what's the cost? Is it a third round pick, fourth round pick? And then how are we able to finagle his current cap hit with the Eagles? Because it is kind of nasty right now. So that's one thing. I do think we can pull it off if the Eagles are looking to move him because there are some talks about that. Obviously, they drafted Jordan Davis. They already have Fletcher Cox on the roster. And this is the last year of Javon Hargrave's contract. So they may be looking to move him to get something if they're not trying to re-sign him next offseason. But that's the next question for the Steelers. What would be your long-term plan for Javon Hargrave? Are you looking to give him that second contract? Because he is coming off his best season in his NFL career. He's still, what, 28, 29? He's going to be looking for something probably again in the double digits if he can perform again this season. Is he going to be someone that you'd want to build around for your defense for the next three to four years? Maybe it's only two to three, but you get my point. You have Hargrave, Cam Hayward, TJ Watt, Minka Fitzpatrick. I don't think it'd be a bad decision. So these are just questions you got to think about with Javon Hargrave. And yeah, ultimately, I would be down with bringing him over to the Steelers. I mean, who wouldn't be? So what I'm thinking in terms of these options, I'm good with going any of the three high-end guys, Javon Hargrave, Larry Ogunjobi, or Eddie Goldman. And depending on their contracts, you still might be able to get a guy like Sheldon Richardson or Star Luda Laley on top of that. And if you can't get one of the guys in their prime, I'm kind of using the same theory here. Just get two of the veterans. Get Star and Sheldon. Get Star and Sue, whatever it is. Like, in reality, I think any of these dudes that I just mentioned are pretty damn good options for the Steelers, considering our defensive line unit right now. It's not like we're asking any of them to come in and be top five players in the league or be all pro. No, it's just come in, fill the rule. Be yourself, be productive, and that's basically what all these guys have done throughout their careers. So I have no doubt they would be able to do it if they came to Pittsburgh. The question is, is just what do you want to weigh? Do you want a guy that's aging a little bit, that's a veteran, you don't have to pay as much? Do you want to pay a guy a little bit more who's in their prime, but maybe you have some injury risk? Or with Javon Hargrave, you might have to give up assets, draft picks to get him, and you're going to have to probably pay him a long-term deal if you want to keep him. But maybe they just want Hargrave for one year if they do make that deal. So yeah, this is what's out there. I do think the Steelers are going to make a move probably in the next week or two. I think we're going to have to. Uh, we have the cap space. Why not? This is probably our biggest need right now outside of maybe shoring up the left tackle. But if Dan Moore emerges, if Dan Moore shows some stuff in the offseason, there's no need to really bring in a left tackle. So with the cap space, why not show up the defensive line? I'm sure the Steelers are looking to do that. But right now, we wait. Wait until the news drops sometime in the future. Maybe this week. Maybe in the next two weeks. Whenever it is, you know Big Deke News will be covering it. Until then, stay tuned. Hope you guys enjoyed this edition. Stay chillin'. Peace.